first on the agenda. Are there any changes, Eric? There are not. No changes. <clears throat> Next, approve the minutes. Uh, the minutes of December 6, 2021. So moved. I have a motion by Gary. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Judy. Any further discussion on these minutes? I know that there seem to be a lot more people that were here at the meeting and not listed. Is that just because you didn't get the, they didn't sign in? They didn't sign the agenda. I couldn't get the Scribble. So, um, uh, yeah. Under community concerns? Yeah. The part about the dump being open seven days a week is not right. It's not if accurate. If I did that, I'm sorry. Okay. The stove one is six days and more so is only one day. Just the Saturday. Okay. I was wondering too if you could put in there um, maybe select more concerns that I wasn't able to participate because the audio wasn't working. Sure. My audio. That's okay. Any other discussion on these minutes? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The minutes are passed. Now the minutes of December 13th, 2021. Do I have a motion to move those? So moved. Motion by Judy. Second. Second by Gary. Any further discussion on these? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? The minutes are moved. Next, community concerns. Do we have any community concerns tonight? Any virtually? All right, seeing none, we'll move to new business. <clears throat> First on the list is presentation by SC Group. <laughs> I see Drew up there. And does everyone Beaming. have the background on this? Okay. Yeah. Can you hear us? Can. Can you hear us? Oh, your volume's not up or something. Let's see. Uh, it might be our TV. Testing. Test. There it is. Yeah, there you go. Welcome. Thank you. We've got uh, Tom Hand, who's an associate landscape architect uh, with us, uh, based in Stowe as well. I'm going to see if I can share my screen here for a moment. You should also have the presentation uh, in your packets. We do. Great. Oh, it says the host has disabled the screen sharing. Um, I don't know if y'all have the ability to enable that or we can walk through if you have it in your packets, I also have. Yeah, she's trying, hold on a sec. Can you try now? Excellent, thank you. So let's see, let me make sure I can make it work properly. Hopefully you all can see a presentation now. Yes. Great. Um, so just a little bit of background on SE Group. We're a planning, permitting, and design company uh, with offices in Vermont, in Colorado, and Utah. Um, our office in Vermont is in Burlington, and, and that's where I live. But we have some team members throughout the state. And as I mentioned, Tom is there um, who lives in Stowe. We have folks in Middlebury. Um, Franklin County, so um, all over, mostly Northern Vermont. Um, and we have offices in Colorado and Utah as well. Um, we have landscape architecture, community planning. We do community redevelopment and revitalization. We have a, a specialty in recreation and tourism um, thinking and rail trails. Uh, we've done a lot of work with the Missisquoi Valley Rail Trail, which we'll, we'll share in a moment. Um, our company was founded doing ski area planning and design uh, back in 1958, and we still do a fair amount of that. And so we work with Stowe and many of the ski areas here in Vermont and throughout the country. Um, and we do environmental permitting and uh, uh, entitlement as well. Um, and we had the uh, pleasure of meeting with Eric and Jessica for the site visit on this proposal on the RFP. Um, uh, I think back in the beginning of December here, or maybe it was late November, if I remember. 
um, and got to, to check out two uh, of those vacant properties. Um, also spent a fair amount of time in, in Morrisville, definitely like to stop and get donuts um, if the line isn't too long when I'm going out to play. Um, so have some familiarity with the downtown and, and Tom being in Stowe has visits even more frequently. So we're pretty familiar, bring our families on the rail trail, like to come and visit. Um, but kind of understanding that there's potentially an opportunity, especially with a couple of vacant parcels in town to explore um, uh, community values for public space, um, potentially looking at um, some reuse for some of those properties, uh, the former gas station um, and the, the vacant lot by Route 100 there, um, kind of opportunities to see what, what could be done beyond um, just kind of paving it over or capping it and seeing that it could be opportunities to, to really um, boost economic development, uh, tourism, community identity, um, and things like that, um, and bringing potentially some funding into the town to do that. Um, maybe also connecting the Lamoille uh, to downtown a little bit better uh, with the, the parcel um, uh, closer to Railroad Street down there um, and supporting local businesses. Um, and so kind of responding to that RFP, um, we put together a little bit of a, uh, of a scope for that, um, primarily engaging with the select board. That would be through three uh, meetings, uh, a kickoff meeting, kind of a working session or a design charrette as the fancy French word for working session. Um, uh, and then we'd come to a final meeting to kind of present some of the concepts that could be done with these sites. Um, we would develop a, a vision uh, for public space downtown based on some of those conversations uh, with the select board and that could be used to just kind of generate conversation within the community more broadly um, about these parcels and about public space downtown more broadly. Um, we would develop those concept sketches. They would be really um, uh, diagrammatic or uh, renderings really just intended to communicate uh, what could be done. They're not construction documents, but very high level documents um, that could kind of uh, inspire folks to see what's really possible. Um, and then some information on implementation guidance in terms of grant funding, um, high level permits and, and relative costs. Um, and so kind of what I like to call the, the Yelp scale of cost estimation with a couple of dollar signs. Uh, one dollar sign, a two dollar sign, or a three dollar sign project, um, sort of level. Um, any questions? Please feel free to hop in as we as we go along here. Um, and then looking at the timeline for us, this would usually be about a two to four month project. Um, it will be primarily driven by the availability of the select board um, and kind of when uh, when you all can meet. Um, when we met for the site visit, there was an idea, uh, perhaps trying to complete it for town meeting day may be a goal. Uh, we are absolutely flexible on that. Um, but if that is the desire, I think the availability of the select board between now and then would be absolutely the most critical driver of something like that. Um, but for us, um, you know, regardless, it'd be about two to four months um, to move through that work. Um, and then just a couple of project examples of our work. We've worked on the bike path here in Burlington um, and some of the pause places and the, the park uh, spaces alongside it. Um, you'll see in the portfolio uh, a riverfront park we did in, in Lincoln, New Hampshire a couple of years ago, um, which included a lot of kind of community engagement and opportunity to connect downtown to some of their natural spaces. Um, Enosburg Falls was a better connection grant program project. Um, and that one uh, looked at connecting uh, Enosburg to the Missisquoi Valley Rail Trail, very similar scope of a couple of parcels and, and park improvements uh, for visioning um, and exploring some transportation elements as well as streetscape. Um, these are just some of the renderings from that that may be similar to what we could produce uh, in this project. Um, then we followed that up with work with the Missisquoi Valley Rail Trail, kind of building off that Enosburg work. We developed a logo um, and wayfinding signage for the trail, designed over 250 signs. Um, there's new kiosks that just went into the Borak project. Um, and so this is just some examples of some of those graphics. Um, and uh, similar, similar to the Lamoille, it's got a lot of connection to downtowns. And so that was a big focus of this project was directing folks um, to the shopping districts and getting them from the trail to the 
to the beer or to the ice cream or to uh, whatever whatever folks are looking for out there. Um, the Union School is a good example, as it was a brownfield, um, had some contaminated soils, um, and is, a, is now a really um, highly desirable playground in Montpelier. It just opened a couple of years ago, but it's um, um, all of the kids seem to really like it. Um, but a really good example of what can be done even in places with lots of kids and contaminated soils. Um, also, I think one of our most winning projects, uh, one of the uh, Facility of Merit from the Rec Parks Association, the Public Places Award um, from VPA, Vermont Planners Association, and the VTSLA Award. Um, then a, a park design competition in Middlebury, just another good example of some of the graphics that could be produced to kind of uh, demonstrate what could be done um, at these various sites. Um, I'm just giving you a sense of what some of those could look like. Um, the Chester Village Plan is another Better Connections grant, uh, similarly a little bit bigger in scope, um, but looking at downtown visioning, um, streetscape, uh, a couple of parklets, um, there's a, a couple of renderings in that one as well. Then lastly, uh, St. Albans uh, Streetscape, which has um, just been a, an amazing um, kind of case study here in Vermont of uh, public investment spurring that private investment there. Um, where they've really um, kind of, as they've implemented the streetscapes that we've designed, it's really kind of been a catalyst for a lot of other uh, uh, private development in town. And so just a couple of photos of that. Um, so with that, uh, that was our presentation uh, on the scope or the project. Are there any questions on our proposal for a team? I had a question about funding. I'm wondering, if, do you help the community for grant writing or point them to where grants are available? Huh? Yes, absolutely. Um, I've been in contact with Jessica and Eric a little bit about the project and did share some grant opportunities with Jessica, um, both to potentially fund this project if needed, as well as um, ultimately the implementation of any of the designs. Um, I think as you we move further into the planning, uh, more grant opportunities become available. For example, there's a lot of stormwater money. And so if that was part of some of the park development, more money becomes available to the town. And so initially to kind of do the visioning, there is absolutely some grants available. And I spoke with Jessica a little bit about this, but the um, uh, municipal planning grants um, may be a, a good one for, for what you all have listed in the RFP now. And then um, if you look at a better connections grant through ACCD and VTrans, that would give you a little bit of a bigger scope to do both uh, some select board engagement, some public engagement, and explore a little bit more of the transportation and streetscape elements all together. Um, and that may be the best approach uh, for the town to, um, um, to kind of move that um, through as one big project to do that. Um, but as we Get into the project absolutely part of that would be identifying grants um, that could support ultimate implementation as well I, I would say too that a, a key differentiator from our standpoint uh looking at this scope was you know lose, using these two parcels really as as launching points in terms of visioning downtown and not necessarily focusing entirely on those parcels but how they fit into the downtown and and you know, work with both the you know vehicular and pedestrian connections and, and transportation system. And it might almost be a little bit of, you know, well, you have this open space here, but you know, it's better used as parking and we can give up parking somewhere else that might actually serve a better use as you know pedestrian space. So trying to look at you know those parcels not necessarily as like the parks where you know potentially we come in and design an element there, but as really kind of a bargaining chip within the town um, to really maximize the best you know way to move throughout town and connect you know the like Drew said earlier the the rail trail up to you know say the say the businesses and whatnot. So um, really interested in looking at you know how those parcels fit in and working you know with the select board and, and the community to kind of engage and understand what, how they're best valued. And, you know, so to Drew's point on the better connections like that, that does really work well with, you know, the ultimate drivers of, of that grant funding. 
Absolutely. It'd be really well aligned with that. The, the issues that are at play here are really well aligned with that. And it would encompass everything you have in your current RFP, plus a little bit more. It would include some more community engagement, and it could get you further along on concept than I think as the RFP was listed, you know, kind of rough design, you could get to more of a concept design and be ready for your next step to be scoping for, you know, streetscape or street realignment, you could go right into the VTrans scoping process from a Better Connections grant. Um, it also does open you up to further funding from the state. Once you get that first grant, they have implementation grants that are only for the Better Connections program as well. And so it's a, it's a good one to get into from, from that regard as well. And um, Drew, just to clarify, the Better Connections grant is caps around, um, is it 88,000 or something? And then the town's um, responsible for a 10% match, is that correct? Or Yeah, I believe it is a 10% match. And the funds, uh, there is a stormwater uh, addition that many communities have gone after. Um, and Northfield um, is one that we just did through the Better Connections that got the stormwater addition. You get a little bit of additional funds. Um, and almost inevitably, if you're doing things with roadways um, or streetscape, you're going to have stormwater. So it's nice to get funding to do even more with that and you know, do it all together. Um, and so that we, we encourage to look at, at that addition to the Better Connections as well. Just a question on your, say, uh, Enosburg project. Is, do those take place on already town-owned lands or are they private? Private so it, it takes place at the master plan level for uh, both private properties, public properties. Some of them were owned by, you know, the rail trail was owned by the agency of transportation um, and, and envisioned some lands um, that were privately owned as well. Um, there we're working with the private landowner. In that case, there was a building that um, was being rehabbed to be a museum. Um, and it was part of the visioning because the landowner had a vision for that dock, for that building. Um, and it fit in with some of the other things that were happening. Um, and so in this case, kind of understanding there may be a municipal opportunity to acquire land, um, it would help you kind of think about the merits of that, the costs and kind of what you might do afterwards. So it'd give you a much better look at, at, at the potential opportunity of acquiring that land, but it might also tell you that it's not the right land to acquire and maybe there, there's other opportunities for public space down. Thank you. But the program would be eligible for the entire kind of downtown Morrisville village area and it would encompass those properties. Okay. Any questions? Any other questions or comments? Do we do we uh, do we have a time limitation of town meeting or not? I'm not picture how they have to leave. We don't own the property. We look at two lots that are available for sale. Oh, okay. Which was the, the lot down here that one of the Yost building used to sit on and take it down. Right. And it's been for sale for some time. Right. And then the other lot was the gas station, which both are owned by private entities. Uh, we just looked at those to see if the, the possibilities of uh, doing some sort of park design on those in the lot. And um, in terms of um, the grant writing process, um, the Better Connections grant program, um, that's the much bigger um, grant to go for. Um, the letter of intent would be due January 15th, um, but I believe it requires that we're downtown, our downtown designation has um, re- um, we have it. We're we do have it, okay. No, we don't we have don't it. We don't have it yet. We would have to have it. We would have to have it for that. So. That may have to be a, a back burner, but like Drew was saying, that would be something, um, it's a much bigger grant and it could involve um, potentially the realigning of that um, intersection that Todd was talking about by mm -hmm. the old gas station. Um, the smaller grant to, um, to go for would be the municipal planning grant. Um, we have missed that funding cycle for this year, but that would cover the planning process um, that would more than cover the planning process as outlined in this RFP. And I now have a, a list from Drew and SE Group about um, other potential grants. Um, and most of the most of the matching is around 10%, so it's not that huge. Um, and I don't know if 
and we can talk about um, where that 10% would come from. Um, so there's a lot there's a lot on the table, um, but I think this gives us a good a good start. Um, yeah. Also, sorry. Um, sorry. I was just going to say I really like the idea a lot. I mean, obviously. It's not something we could plan for this coming town meeting, but I love the idea of having a plan going forward that we could figure out everything, you know, obviously we've got to get the voters approval to have anything like this happen. And, um, and that too is why it couldn't happen this coming town meeting day, but maybe if we could get things set up and become eligible, you know, as far as a designated downtown and, you know, applying for the grants in a timely manner. We have to, it's, it's kind of like a, for me, it sounds like this domino effect is going to happen to make it all happen and then uh, be approved by the town, the taxpayers. But I love the idea and it'd be great to, to take advantage of this to, to make something out of those two properties, or I can't even think of more than two. But um, right. like Eric said, it, it's, it's not an easy thing when you deal with private ownership. But that's why I'm glad to hear you guys talk about. Um, you know, some of your projects have involved uh, properties that were owned privately because that's the first thing that comes to mind, you know, not even knowing what, what we might be able to acquire property for and then all the costs and everything that goes with it. Um, you know, there's a bunch of question marks, but I, I like the idea, certainly. Tom, could you, isn't the Westford project that you're working through right now, it's not owned by the town, but they're planning for it. Is that right? Yeah, you know, and I was just thinking of that one too, because that is one where they have received a grant um, and are working with, you know, their local regional planning commission on you know, multiple multitude of uh, facet, facets on that project from both the, you know, planning and design of what they want it to be to also working through a corrective action plan and remediation of, you know, what also used to be a former kind of gas station, um, you know, bus, bus barn, bus depot area, uh, right in the village of Westford. So, you know, it's a similar relationship and, and, you know, what we're seeing there is the community gets a little bit more uh, on notice because now we're, you know, the town is starting to talk about, you know, developing private lands that they don't own yet. Um, but you know, what we're seeing is that it's just really critical to be open and clear with communication. And you know, I think the point of like making sure the community is, in, is supportive of the project and the process right from the start, like you're saying, uh, is, a, is a really critical piece. It's, it's a matter of saying like, this is where we can go and what those high level goals are that we're trying to achieve. But this is the process and the steps we need to take. And you know, ultimately, what is the funding source, whether it is through taxpayer funding and it's a, a you know a small bond vote or something on the ballot to are there you know grants that are available that the town can pursue and and fund it through that through that aspect yeah of course we'd, we'd have to have the full cooperation of the the property owner as well you know and have have them uh, agreed to do the process you know that, that's also a big a big order but it'd be great to have happen you know i know that um you know, with our history, we can buy real estate, you know, the select board is is uh, able to do that. But when you're talking about really large purchase and, um, you know, involving several hundred thousand or a million dollars or whatever it is, we definitely would have to get taxpayer uh, approval. So, but I appreciate your time and effort. I, I'd, I'd like to look into it further for sure. Well, I'd be interested, yes. Um, the other thing is, um, you're saying, Bob, that we would have to get taxpayer approval before we bring it to the voters for approval. But see, I, but what I'm wondering is, um, is there a mechanism by which we can bring it before the town just in this planning phase? Because that was sort of part of the idea is that um, we can all talk together as a select board. And um, part of the other, my other ideas about this process are you know, bringing in all the other interested um, local organizations that would have a stake in this, um, you know, not trying to totally act independently, um, because I don't want to reinvent the wheel. I know so much work has gone on in the downtown around revitalization. Um, also, perhaps creating an informal um, survey of like a Google survey for, um, for the town to gauge interest. Um, and, and also, you know, speaking with the owners of the property, 
further to say, like, do you want to be part of this visioning process? Um, and applying for the grants, I, I, I wonder if we can do all of those pieces before we bring it to the town. Because, you know, what, what I was imagining we would bring to the town is a proposal and these um, and these designs, you know, like we've we've come up with these ideas, you know, and a lot of these um, pictures that you see in the presentation, it's, you know, people in the community and there's, um, you know, you know, big displays and they're saying like, I envision this or I like this. Hyde Park went through a similar process for their downtown. They just got a better connections grant. Um, so I'm just wondering, I, I wonder like if there is a piece that we can do to so that we're really presenting a, a vision to the town to ask, you know, to ask for the support from the town and not even necessarily very much money up front, just you know, the you know, yeah, this is in line with survey values. Yeah. I and like also, that. and I also like the idea, um, as you're mentioning the partnering with the private um, own landowners um, and the public private investment. I'm wondering if you could just speak to that like really briefly, because what I feel like where I'm seeing the tra trajectory of the town go is that a lot of like, as we're seeing by all the people showing up at our, our planning, like our town plan um, meetings and our all of our meetings lately that people are getting really like interested in the development of town and some people are okay with it but some people want to aren't okay with it and some people just like want to see that there's more of a vision um so i'm one i'm wondering you know like with some of our bigger developers if if there is um a partnership that we can um nurture um where we're saying like okay you're building this um you know this much needed housing how can we partner um you know in line with this vision to help fund some of these um, public projects. So I don't know if there's anything you could speak to briefly that um, would speak to that public private partnership a little more. Yeah, I think, um, especially kind of based on this conversation, I would really encourage you to think about the Better Connections program, because that would allow you to look at the town very broadly, um, look at that and, and have those conversations around how do we structure public-private partnerships? Who's interested? And you can have those conversations uh, with both the community and develop the development community, uh, and different stakeholders, those landowners in particular. Um, and you could you could start to pursue those funds without knowing these are the two sites. Um, maybe there are several other sites, um, and maybe one of those falls away, maybe one of them stays. Um, but really exploring that concept of streetscape enhancement. Um, public space and you know movement of cars and people, um, which is really what the down the better connections programs are all about. And then you could use that as a way to study these and and have those conversations that you do need to have with both the community and the private landowners um, uh, through that. But you don't necessarily have to get their buy-in on acquiring property or anything like that before you go for the better connections grant. Um, and I really think that would be a good vehicle. I would also just say one note is you may be able to reach out to Richard Amore about having a, about a pending uh, approval for that downtown designation. If you do have something in, that could be an opportunity. I, I know he has been flexible on some things like that in the past. I, I would add in too, sorry. I would add in uh, regarding the, the private public development, You know what we're seeing on the Westford project is that the town has partnered not necessarily with private developers, but with you know public, uh, other public nonprofit agencies. Uh, you know they're look, trying to look at creating uh, affordable housing in the village. So they've partnered with Champlain Housing Trust uh, and Green Mountain Habitat for Humanity, as well as Vermont River Conservancy. And so it's you know a little bit of a complicated but very strong group of. Uh, entities that are working together with the town on this, you know, one particular parcel, but for the benefit of, you know, both public access to the, the river they have there, the, you know, investment in local uh, affordable housing, and the town also gets, you know, public access and kind of improved downtown frontage as well uh, out of it as well as but the potential that they might carve out some of the land for additional municipal use. So, you know, there's there's a couple of routes. One, looking at you know, are there agencies, whether it's through you know, Lamoille Regional Planning Commission, 
uh, and you know some of those other partner agencies that you could try to partner with and kind of look at all right, what are the bigger, broader things we're trying to get out of this ongoing revitalization of downtown uh, and kind of form a, form a stronger family of partners uh, to go after continued planning. Yeah, I, thinking about it too, I'd really like to have uh, our community coordinator, Trish Fowler, in on the conversation because mm -hmm. she knows a lot about it. It's, it's unfortunate she's not with us tonight. And and also LCPC. LCPC might be able to help us as well. You know, Like you said, they could partner with us and maybe help us pull a project together. I just know our downtown designation, I think, is not going to happen until soon. <laughs> well, but I think with the, I don't think to like summer. Right. All the paperwork it has at to least. go through. Yeah. At if, least. if we're lucky. Yeah. Yeah. A year from now, we, you know, we might be. That's that's a concern I have about applying for um, better yeah. connections grant. We have to have downtown designation, so it's kind of. I don't. I don't know how to even think about that. Yeah, that's a, that's, a that's a trish. Well, you know, and, and part of it might be that, you know, we've kind of outlined to you like a synopsis of what our process would be to kind of complete this project as, as you guys kind of asked for, right? The other thing might be, you know, a year out from now, you have the designation, you have kind of worked with these partners we've talked about tonight and have create a better understanding of what that ultimate vision is. And so now you can start to hit the ground running in a year with you know your partners in place, you know your downtown designation in place, and a really strong um, proposal for what you're trying to go after for the grant as well. So you know think about the steps, the pre steps you can take uh, to get to that point where you're actually then ready to do the project. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure we're willing to continue to counsel on on that as as much as needed. Mm -hmm. too. Go ahead, Brian. So I want to say I think we're kind of getting the court. Ahead of the horse. I think we first of all to be doing what we're talking about doing, we're looking at a piece of property, we don't even we don't have one. Right. So I think we ought to be looking more into that at the same time of doing some of the other, but again, sounds like we aren't ready. So, it, uh, so do we have a contract for these guys yet? No, 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 no. no, okay. I was wondering uh, um can't, I fell on the left right side of the screen. Oh. Um, when you were talking about the steps, are you talking about on the proposal page? Um, I guess it's like page twelve. The page two of your proposal: select board engagement, communicate vision, presentation graphics, information guides. Is that what you're talking about? Steps? Yes. Yeah. So there's that you know kind of brief scope of work that you know Drew and I work together on on developing, and you know when we get into the project as defined by the you know, RFP that's, that's, you know, that we received, that is the workflow that we thought about in terms of kind of addressing these two parcels that you're currently thinking about how they fit into the broader town network, right? Um, you know, that scope of work may change slightly in however much time from now, depending on how you guys develop this project, develop the vision, you know, work with project partners. You might decide, you know what, as much housing is going into Morrisville already in Morristown, like maybe we, we could invest in more housing, you know, right in the downtown area. So there's a housing piece of it. So um, that is, I think, a good example of an initial scope of work that, you know, we've, we've outlined and, and takes that two to four month process to get through some high level planning. Of, of these parcels and, you know, starts to really get the juices flowing in terms of thinking about downtown, what some of the opportunities are. Um, but, you know, you could also go through a little bit more of a strategic process uh, and, you know, not put the cart before the horse and kind of get thoughts in order around, you know, what, what you really want to do, get out of these parcels, you know, other important issues in downtown uh, and connections that can be made. And, you know, really, look at the Better Connections grant application and say, you know, all right, if we're trying to go for this as a grant, like, you know, what are the stormwater things we can do? What are the transportation things we can do? Who are the appropriate partners to connect with in order to chase that? And out of that, then form potentially a new RFP. Well, first do your grant uh, and then potentially put a new RFP together that says, all right, now this is the project that we ultimately want to go, go after. 
because I think as much as we want to work with you all on this scope, I think the thing we'd recommend is, yeah, waiting on it, pausing until you can do the Better Connections project, and then you can do that scope of work plus a lot more um, as well. And so I would say, I think doing a survey of your community now, just gauging their idea of exploring this and about those parcels could be really helpful just to get some um, kind of movement um, and, and then working towards that. And, and we're really happy to consult at any time between now and then, but you know, it's like if, if somebody's coming to purchase these parcels and there is some critical need to explore them right away, then do that. But if not, kind of take a step back, look at it uh, downtown a little bit more comprehensively and explore these parcels and others in transportation and stormwater and some of those other things all together. And then, um, then get yourself set up for funding because that's what the Better Connection program has been really successful at is, is teeing up communities for the full gamut of funding from ACCD and VTrans because it, it brings both those agencies together and it gets you kind of a, a first row seat at all of those funds. Sounds good. Well, the, I, I do understand and appreciate what Brian's talking about, you know, the cart before the horse, but I, I like the idea of, of putting out a study or at least finding out, you know, what people want, you know, and if we, if we can make a plan, I do know there's a couple of different areas where we, we possibly could get some funding too. One of those is the Copley Fund, which, um, you know, it funds different, different things in this town it has for a long, long time. And there's quite a, quite a bit of money in that fund. It has it's a very specific criteria that goes with it, but um, that's certainly an avenue for funding. The other one is I brought it up before is we have a Morristown Development Fund, and we haven't we haven't actually made a loan to that in a long long time. And I serve on that board as well, and we've actually talked about um, dedicating that to some sort of town project, some specific thing. And the select board hasn't hasn't uh, molded over yet, but. That, that fund is sitting, uh, and um, I think there's about $600,000 in the fund, something like that. And um, that, that's a possibility for funding too. Um, so it's not, it wouldn't be just the taxpayer's money, but there is, there is you know, hope out there for having a project like that become reality. So, but I, I understand what Brian's talking about. We don't have the land yet, but I like the idea of a study or at least, um, you know, some survey to see where people want to go, you know? Maybe that's something we could have a survey appear on a town meeting or, you know, something like that. We appreciate your joining us tonight and certainly um, make us think about the future in town. Well, we appreciate your time too, and you were excited. There's a lot of momentum in Morristown right now. As, as Tom mentioned, there's a lot of housing going in, really exciting projects, and the Lamoille's taken off, and, you know, we really see. Morristown as a as a town on the rise in Vermont. So we're we're excited to, to spend some time with you. Thanks. Great. Thanks thank a lot. You, thank you for your time, both Drew and Tom. I think there might be a bigger scope that we we, uh, we come into this. I mean, we're looking at maybe a bigger police department, uh, town garage, right. uh, village garage combination, the whole public safety building, public safety building type thing. I mean. This could all be worked into it. And I'm also wondering, have we reached out to any other planners or have we just is it advertised? Yes. Yeah. So there are the yeah, five different companies in the Jenny County yeah. region, yeah. SE groups and all that response. But yeah, you're right. Looking at I mean, bigger picture, that's yeah. a look at it from thirty thousand feet so that then maybe mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, number two, sign letter of support for Lost Nation Brewing's application to Vermont Capital Investment Grant. And Alan. I, yes. Hello. Do you want to speak about that? Um, sure. Uh, well, last, uh, last spring, um, we took our outdoor seating area, um, which I'm sure some of you are familiar with, our restaurant, and uh, we took some of the PDP money and a lot of restaurant revitalization money and lowered it towards a massive upgrade in space. Uh, we built a new slab, we buried all the utilities, we upgraded our kitchen, uh, and it really became a beautiful space. Uh, and our intent from the beginning was to frame it so that it could eventually be closed in. 
Uh, so the exterior wall that you see as you pass by the creamery, uh, that is a, um, a, a two by six in, that frames insulated wall that is fully exterior ready to be exterior house. Uh, and our intent was to work through the summer, uh, hopefully uh, make enough money to close that space in, put the glass garage doors on the top, and button up each end, and drop heaters in there at the year round space. And like many other restaurants in the area, we were faced with a lot of labor shortages. Um, we were not able to realize the revenue that we had anticipated, uh, so we weren't able to close that space in. So coming into October, um, you know, we laid off a, a bunch of people where if we were able to keep going, which we do, which we have done historically every year, because we close the outdoor space, we go inside to the smaller space. Um, but we had hoped to be able to keep going to raise that money uh, to frame everything in and put it all up so we could operate year round outside, especially in this world, more space and outdoor, large, large ventilation, ventilated areas are uh, everyone's uh, privy. Um, so this grant came along and caught wind of it, and my understanding is it is an um, uh, infrastructure grant for economic or for um, job preservation. Uh, this is, I, I feel that we're perfectly positioned um, for this. Uh, I've been working on the past couple months to develop ports together uh, for the space, and uh, this would be the final piece of our support. And I'm going to submit the application probably tomorrow or by the end of the week. And fingers crossed, we'll be able to Sounds good. Any questions? Does somebody have a motion? I'll make a motion. We approve it. We'll have a I have a motion by Brian and a second by Gary. Is there any further discussion on this? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. Good luck. Be a nice choice for everyone. If get Todd's. Thank you. I've got Todd's here. Oh, you do? Yes. Okay. Thank you all very much. Have a great night. Yeah. Good luck. <clears throat> all right, next. Approve the road naming, First Light Lane. There are two road names at this time. If you have a question, they are both uh, First Light Lane and that's even High Lane. Both are uh, enclosed within the same development. The proposed development has to do 100 south. Flies uh, uh, right beside Manus Road on the north side of Manus Road. So the two roads are both uh, kind of encapsulated inside the metal there. Okay. Do I hear a motion regarding them? So moved. Motion by I Gary. Both. Under the same, same, same person. Same All right. We have a, I have a motion by Gary and a second by Judy. Yes. Any further discussion on these? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed unanimously. Next, discuss the MCC appropriation article. See in your uh, packet there, I included uh, the uh, words for the county taxpayers. I don't think that uh, the leadership from MCC has seen this yet. Don't look at my copy. I don't know if it's true. Yeah. What we did, folks, is we took one back in time. Uh -huh. We're back in time to when the first seventeen thousand dollars was appropriated to that fund, and I used the exact same wording except I removed the seventeen thousand dollar request and put in a half cent on the bank. All the other words are identical, uh, and so it spells out the direction for the money to go to, and of course we hope to get to the what we need. And I just to give a little more detail. Eric mentioned it earlier, but the idea is to, to have uh, maybe two or three years of this to get to the level of $100,000. Is that correct? That's correct. Do I hear a motion regarding this? So are we, is this the motion here? Or such, did it change? This is the, re, is this the revised version? It is the revised version. Okay. 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 And the motion is simply to approve that as presented. And so we wouldn't be requiring the MCC to, to have everyone sign this? Okay. No, it would be on the... They could bypass that. Right. It'll be an article of town meeting. 
Make a motion and we accept the article. Um, do we read the whole thing to the record? We can if you like. Um, that will the town and town meeting vote to appropriate the sum equal to a half cent on the grand list for the purpose of preserving open space and natural resources land, negotiating options, purchase agreements, and other legal documents, purchasing or otherwise acquiring lands or interest therein, and other activities consistent with Morristown Conservation Commission bylaws. Such money to be placed in the Morristown Conservation Commission fund and used in accordance with said bylaws. Unused portions of this fund will carry over to be used solely for these purposes in future years. Good job. Thank you. I have a motion by Judy. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Gary. Um, is, there, is there any discussion like this is all good with you all? And yeah. 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 Okay. They've been waiting a long time for that, right, Ron? Yeah. <laughs> okay. A couple of years. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion is approved unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, work. Work. <clears throat> Next, approve LCPC property transfer to town, Ryder Island. So, folks, so the word approve is probably misplaced here. This is simply a, a, an FYI. Yeah. Uh, said, we said we've already approved that we're losing that property to the town. Right now. This is the certificate resolution we received from uh, the executive director after a board director's meeting with the LCPC. This is just saying that they have resolved to the team that we've got to the town during the process of work. No action that's okay. <laughs> FYI. Okay. Next, review the Oxbow use rules and regulations. From the end of the season, we're starting to get a request for the use of the Oxbow. Uh, it's just a good time for us to just look out through the current. Use application and the restrictions of land use uh, based on our policy, and to start up a conversation with you folks as to how we want to proceed throughout the coming months as we receive these uh, requests for usage of the Oxbow. Do you, uh, would you entertain the idea of an approval process outside of your pur direct purview? So I said it doesn't take up meeting time. On those applications that do not involve alcohol, in my preference, I would rather have the board fully involved in that decision. Mm -hmm. Or but changes to the time, like late. Sure thing. If it goes beyond the 10 o'clock normal closing time, something like anything that's out of the ordinary. Right. right. And we're going to ask Jason for that anyway. Sure. You know, no. if, that's, if that's okay with you folks, then uh, we'll, we'll put something together for changing the burden down the process for approvals. It sounds good to me. And then, you know, you know, what we bring to you is we can adjust until we get it right. So that's we don't get that many, why can't we? Right. Right. Only a few. Oh, you're saying we don't get that many, why can't we do that? Or? Why don't, yeah. why uh, can't we do it here? You, you can. I'm, I'm offering to oh, you okay. to take it off your plate such that it reduces your meeting times. It's just something between the, the Trish, or whomsoever the community development coordinators and the TA could likely review these applications as they come in. And if there's standard use of the musical events that don't go beyond the, the typical 10 o'clock hour, no alcohol use, uh, those kind of events that are more or less run of the mill, uh, common use of the park, that they can be approved in house, make you folks aware of the usage. Uh, or like a wedding or just, something yeah, like that. Just, or we can do it during the meeting. It's completely up to you. I'm just looking for ways. He's trying to help make the meeting shorter. No, he's <laughs> trying to be nice to us, but we just keep kicking Bob. You go to the <laughs> I, I don't mind you take I don't mind Trish taking over that responsibility. Um, just letting us know. Does she really want As long as we know. Yeah. She said she thought it was a great idea. Yeah. And because it, it actually uh streamlined some of the things as far as timeline goes. These yeah. folks, you're gonna see an application here in just a moment. Uh that is well in advance. There are September requests, so uh, no, no issue on this timeline wise, but sometimes the the right. two weeks can make a difference on one of the plans. That's yeah. probably as big a concern as anything. Yeah. That way you don't have to wait for a meeting. Right. Right. And, if, and if it also, if it's a last minute thing, you know, that happens too. Yeah. But this one here's already got a contrary signal after we price what you've got. 
<laughs> but it'd be nice to have the FYI about about these, you know, just so we know when somebody says, "Oh, what's going on at the Oxbow?" Yeah, you know? we can certainly develop a uh, monthly calendar where we release part of your packet as an FYI. Yeah, hmm. that'd be nice. You know what the usage. I see what you mean. Yes. I'd like to go down. Listen though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just, we don't need a motion on this. No, just a direct to the travel. Yeah. Is that okay. okay with you folks? We'll talk about. Revised policy back to when you decide. Very good. All right, next uh, along that line, approve the fiddler's meat application. These folks uh, have used our article before last year. Uh, they presented us a certificate of insurance. Um, the certificate of insurance. So we're just going to confirm that the, the certificate of last year. Uh, the dates are inclusive on this date if they aren't going to require them to give us an updated certificate. You may have done more than the additional insured. The initial insured? Additional. Additional insured. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yep. Jason, you didn't have any issues with this last year? The fiddlers meet? No, we didn't. They have requested uh, the town consider waiving their $150 user's fee for the event if they are, in other words, hold. Is that really? Is that free of the community? They don't charge admissions or any, and there's no fees. This is simply a funny event for them. Um, maybe the town would be a concern. Well, I mean, they still have to put the, the deposit down, correct? They do. All other stipulations will apply. And are there other groups or organizations that uh, that are paid $150. And that's open to the public? That they all get charged with like, the same three users. Right, but well, mm -hmm. I'm saying, do they, and then they open it up to the public? Are there really uh, groups that do that? Not all of them open to the public, no. Some of them are private entities as well. Right, okay. I think part of that fee is probably things like cleanup and stuff. Yeah, we have to have the highway right. guys, empty trash and that kind of stuff. You know, electricity that we use around electricity. We mm -hmm. use the bathrooms. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think I think keep the fee. 150 is not very much. No, really. it's there. It's even cheaper than Armour. The civilian. Gotta put a can in there. So, do I have a motion regarding this? They should charge the fee. Yeah, five dollars. <laughs> I approve the, uh, I make a motion to approve the Fiddler's Meat application with the fee included. I have a motion by Judy. Do I have a second? Sure. Sure. Second by Gary. Any further discussion on this? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed unanimously. Next, number nine, approve the MOU for the police department. Jason, you yeah. Jason, you're up, right? So what this is, is I want to appoint a acting sergeant while I'm in the current chief to kind of relieve some of the responsibility uh, for myself because I'm working the investigative side of things. So the union and myself and Eric uh, drafted up an MOU which will give the acting sergeant a smaller extra an hour and that will stay in place until the uh, end of June, and then this MOU will be terminated. At that point, we'll uh, have a hiring process within for the service. That sounds good. Jason seems to find himself busier than normal. I don't know why. <laughs> he has big, big shoes to fill, Jason. Yeah. <laughs> Do I hear a motion or sure, can <laughs> 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 I'll make a motion to approve it. I have a motion by Brian. Do I have a second? Second by Gary. Any further discussion on this? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed unanimously. <clears throat> Number 10, accept the resignation for the town cleaning employee. This one came out of the blue. Yeah. <laughs> Never would have thought that. So what happens if we don't approve it? Right. <laughs> right. Just yeah, the, the, the this is overflow. So uh, pretty serious. Is Richard's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, Richard, Just, I've seen Richard in your clean. 
the chief, like Carol said, the the retiring police chief's wife was um, cleaning the the oxo. Not oh, here. No. Can I? No, two no, 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 here. He's opposite. I, well, can I read it? I believe the time has come for Richard and I to move on and spend some time enjoying his retirement. That's. I mean, that's just beautiful. That's awesome. <laughs> I am ending my cleaning contract with Town Morrisville, Morristown. I will no longer be cleaning the Morristown Police Department of Sega Building. My last cleaning will be on January 28, 2022, which will allow you time to fill the contract. Thank you, Penelope Key. That's very nice. Started. The new sergeant. The new sergeant. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen Richard's been in here plenty of times cleaning with Penny. So what I what's going to come out of this though is the new sergeant will do the police department and Eric Dodge, I think I see his name. He can do it. <laughs> so do I hear a motion to accept this? So moved. With the Motion by Brian. Second, second by Gary. A big thank you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion is passed unanimously. And our fee has already gone out to many for a cleaner. Uh, for a so uh, we'll have a part for the second meeting of January and starting the first week of February. How about a dog officer assistant? Is that <laughs> position going on yet? Included in that contract? No. Yeah. <laughs> he thinks I'm joking. If we can get him to be the grant writer, we'd be in shape. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Next, um, number 12, would you bid, bid for truck number 34 at the highway garage? Number Isn't that a flower pot? Number 11. So you weren't going to do the you? What? Oh, yes, I did. I brushed right by it. Sorry. Number, number 11. By design, right? Yeah, by design. Tell Richard he's not getting done. Number 11, accept resignation of the police chief. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? Thank you. Yes, a big thank you. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed, unfortunately. No. Unanimously. <clears throat> All right, now we'll do review bit of truck number 34, the flower pot. Pretty much right, Kevin? Do I hear a motion? You guys saw the bit? It's, yeah. The, this truck doesn't, it's, yeah, it can, it's, it's in rough shape. This is the one that has the trees growing through it, or is this it, the it, no, it's a trailer. Uh, this, this is a truck that uh, has some significant maintenance issues. Yeah. It was a salt truck. Salt truck. Salt truck. Salt yeah. truck. Yeah. And the salt it's was salt taken to stole. Okay. It hasn't been used in uh, a couple years. Well, we used it a little bit last year. Yeah. Yeah. But not much. Probably not inspected. It's the last uh, of our um, used <laughs> car lot. <laughs> I, I just want to, I mean, I, I don't want to throw a wrench on anything, but. Like, I just am wondering, because our budget's so tight, like, could we make more than this if we brought it to all metals? Yeah, you got to have somebody haul it, and that's right. probably most of the cost. Right, okay. <laughs> it could, might cost $500 it's if everyone bring it up there. It's not inspected or groundable. No. No. I know, it's just, I know it seems like just a tiny amount of money. Yeah, you know, yeah. Then go try to move it or whatever. Right. Don't forget you're home. paying insurance on that truck. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're we're moving as we said your forward on the replacement schedule of our dump trucks happening in a seven year time period versus this truck, which is a what's it now? Fourteen years or something? Yeah. It's, it's over ten. Yeah. So while this one doesn't always have anything about it, it's it's young tired. Yeah. yeah. Now it's dead. <laughs> But I, it's good to ask the question. Right, yeah. Like sure. if, if, I know, you think 150 bucks. If we're getting rid of vehicles earlier, can we make anything? Can we recoup anything? You know, that's we, we are. I mean, on the seven year cycle. Yeah. We have so many dump trucks. It takes us a while to get that yeah. cycle done. It'll yeah. be probably another seven, eight years. Is that right? We're completely in within that seven year cycle. Yeah. We're buying our trucks, financing for five, keeping them for seven with extended warranty. And then trading them in when the warranty expires. Right. It's like that we get more money for the vehicle and trade it in. Yes. 
We have a bad program in place uh, a year and a half, two years ago. Yeah. Yeah. And they're under warranty the whole time we have them. Right, right. Yeah. That's huge. Right. Yeah. 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 Well, sometimes mm -hmm. if we got any life zones too, we put them out the desk. Yeah. yeah. Right. We do. Let's see if we can get yeah. okay. Right. Okay. So, do I hear a motion regarding this? I'll make a motion we let him. I have a motion by Brian. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Judy. Any further discussion? He works for us, didn't he? No, yeah. that's his son. This is his son, by Ray oh. Cass himself works for us in the highway department. This is his 18 year old son. This okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed unanimously. Next, approve the warrant. Do I hear a motion to approve the warrant? So moved. I have a motion by Judy. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Gary. <laughs> All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion is passed. <clears> TA <throat> report. Eric. Sarah is with us via Zoom tonight. Hi, Sarah. Uh, dated December 7th. Hi. This is in your packet. I uh, don't mind my reading it for everybody's uh, understanding. This comes from the International Institute of Municipal Clerks. Dear Sarah, the Athenians were leaders who invented the idea of political democracy, philosophy, logic, and rhetoric. They left the world enriched with their ideas. The choice of Athenian in the title of leadership society signals the value of this culture from 2,500 years ago. To be an Athenian fellow is to hold knowledge and the quest for knowledge in high esteem. Municipal clerks at their best exemplify Athenian values. The education department is pleased to announce that you have fulfilled all the requirements to become an Athenian fellow and have accepted you as a fellow in the Athenian Leadership Society. IMC will recognize your hard work and efforts for this accomplishment at the 2022 Annual Conference in Little Rock, Arkansas, during the opening ceremony on Monday, May 23rd, 2022. Your fellowship certificate and pin are enclosed. We look forward to seeing you where you can. This is yet Another milestone in Sarah's uh, uh, continued journey into professional development in the municipal clerk's world. And this is something we're very, very proud of. Well done. Congratulations, Sarah. Very good. Well done. Very soon. Speech. <laughs> no speech, but thank you. I, I actually loved um, doing the Athenian dialogue leadership classes. And um, I'm pretty sure yesterday I finished my last class in order to become um, an internationally recognized um, municipal clerk. Once, um, once I get that, then I can go for my master's and then I can be an Athenian dialogue facilitator and um, teach classes to clerks all over the U.S. So that's Wait. my long goal. Wow. Well, you getting this international thing, you're not thinking of moving to Spain or something, are you? <laughs> or Costa no. Rica. <laughs> or Costa Rica, yeah. No. So well done. Thanks. Congratulations. Excellent, Sarah. Anymore? So, moving on, I wanted to bring your attention. Uh, you haven't noticed down in the Oxbow, the basketball court down there has been lit up now for well over a month, maybe a little longer than that. That lighting uh, and its wiring and, and installation all happened at a cost of a little over eight thousand dollars. Four thousand one hundred fifty-five dollars of that came from a recreational facilities grant that Patricia Palmer wrote. Oh, yay! And then she went out to the village of Morrisville, talked to Penny, with water and light, and they, through their funding sources, came up with the other half of the money. And the entire project was paid for and installed, and it has been very well used. Um, maybe not so much this time of year with basketball, but I, uh, I don't know if you drive by there. I would drive by now and look down there because I'm sure it's helped a lot of folks be able to look down Portland Street to see into the parking lot is much better than that. So uh, it's Great. creating several different very positive additions to the Oxwell Park. Well, kudos to Tricia. Yeah, very nice. Uh, the grant paperwork has been submitted to the Better Roads Program for the uh, road erosion inventory that's going to happen next summer. Uh, I am hoping to see eight thousand dollars from that, so that'll be eight thousand. We'll see trend at our next award meeting after Christmas. Uh, 
just I it, I can talk to you about the highway department every time we meet because it seems the weather patterns have kept them out repeatedly and continuously for uh, two days. Two days, yes. Uh, the guys are pulled up very well, the vehicles are running well, uh, the parts are good with the equipment, but uh, I don't know. I'm, the complaints, as far as I'm concerned, uh, I, don't, I don't know that I've gotten one yet. So the guys are really hitting this thing and they're getting out there, and uh, Devin and Scott and, uh, and Matt, they're all doing a good job keeping things cleared uh, up for our, our commuters and folks around the town. But I uh, would be remiss in not pointing out that the police department has been extremely active recently. We had an incident Friday at People's Academy. The response was a uh, shared response between our department and the sheriff's department. I'm not sure who else would have responded. Uh, but they handled the situation uh, very, very well. Uh, we heard feedback already about how professional they were and dealing with the students and sending faculty up there. We follow up this morning with the presence. Uh, just to let folks know that uh, we take our school safety series. That is all I have for panels. Okay, any questions for Eric? Thanks, Eric. Select board concerns. Gary. No, I don't have any concerns in the world. Yes, it's like Eric, but kudos to the LA department for keeping the streets. You go to the Eric at the last farm of our team. Right after he was saw and I'm sure the microbes were a little rough to play off of But Brett Tang, I'll mention that he heard the graders out at 12 30 a.m. <laughs> when that temperature went dropped, uh, or when the temperature went up to 50 degrees yeah. and frost came out of the road and created the mini spring run season. And uh, yeah. they got the guys out with the graders and uh, fixed those roads and then they turned back up again so they're in better shape now. Yeah. All right, Judy. Um, just like to thank the select board for their support and concern and care. Thank you. Yes. Um, thanks for mentioning that, Eric, about the police um, presence at People's Academy. As you know, I work there, and um, I really appreciated having them um, help out on Friday, and then to have the presence um, on um, today at school. It was yeah, very respectful, but also like they were there, so we felt safe. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Jess. Brian? The Stafford Stafford Avenue lights. Oh, about the intersection being yeah. there? I have a meeting, uh, Rob Moore from LCPC is setting that up in a very near future. Uh, around the holidays, it's hard to predict when. But it's to talk about uh, a traffic light at that intersection, lighting in general. Uh, the intersection by Hanford, there are two lights that are over the intersection, but I agree there. They really may not be. Well, the ones I'm looking at, if you go over and start, it's the one on Stafford Avenue at the end, both ends. The one where you drive in the driveway is not bad. You just, I just notice all the way down through there's lights and they're on the open. I thought you probably were busy enough you didn't No, I, I know I'm, I built the meeting with Rob. Yeah. It's all about lights and lighting and, and the safety of the intersection. Like I said, I didn't know who to go see. So, but. Thank you. That's it. Thank you to the highway. And I have, um, Tina, I just wondered if you would give us the timeline for budgets. You know, real tight. Right. <laughs> I know that, but but just so we're thinking about what we have to have when. Well, you all see that you do have your budget books. They were updated with just the just the, the stuff, the housekeeping stuff that came in later on. Um, I did put. I did not get a figure from dispatch from the county sheriff because he says that he needs to wait until the brand list is out, and we can't wait that long. Um, he said sometime in January or something, his account would give them. I added a 10% increase because that's what I had heard from one of the girls in the office, which is considerable. Um, but it goes based on brand list, apparently. And I'm not quite sure why we couldn't get a better accurate. Because, like, the, the county court also goes on brand list and gives a better idea, but maybe they just haven't got to it. Um, so, all of that is in there. There's been a couple of ideas that have come out since you, that book that you, you've gotten that may help a little bit. 
Um, next time we meet is going to be after Christmas, and that's going to be um, basically you're going to have to make some choices at that point of where you think we need to cut the budget, increase the budget, do whatever you want. You're going to have to make those choices because, and Eric may have suggestions for you, but it's getting to the point where we're going to need to get to sign the, you're going to have to sign the warning at some point in the first part of, you know, mid, mid to, yeah, something like that. But we are going to have to have some time to get everything together and, and whatnot. So we're going to have to have decisions on that night. So if you're not going to be here for any reason and you have something that you would like, you know, talk to talk about, maybe you can talk to Eric about it, but it's going to be a tough meeting because everything's going to be looked at. Um, you know, I've had some suggestions and so has Eric. I've shared them with him. So he'll be able to help you, you know, share some of his thoughts, but it's really down to the why. I mean, we didn't go over the capital budget per se. Um, we can always do that too. All that is really is just a plan, an idea of when we're going to replace what equipment. Um, but anything you wanted to replace in this coming budget is already in your budget books. That's just a like a roadmap, if you will. My my um, thought of bringing it up tonight is that's my concern is the budgets because um, as you guys all know that uh, all the budgets except for the fire budget are up considerably. Well, even fire is up a little bit. Up a little bit, but not yeah. compared to the other departments. And you know, I'm I'm just asking: is there anywhere that we can um, not necessarily cut, but maybe push off a year because there's so many other really really high items that, that will drive you know well that will be you know what you you get to decide yeah I mean, you've heard all the department heads say why they think they right. do what they do and it's going to be up to you to decide and if they are supposed to wait a year or not right okay. and, then, and the final point i would find is to bring you a proposal of operational cuts right you can i have been looking at the stuff and suggesting different formats for things and uh you know, we submitted the uh, proposal for the renovation of stairs. I re engaged with Don Lake, talked to him about spreading that over a two year period of time. So, we're right. that, that dollar figure still will come in, but there are things like that we're trying to do, just as you're saying, trying to spread these out, not trying to conquer the world in one, one year, right? Uh, in order to bring the budget down to a more reasonable percentage. Yeah, uh, we're starting out with a 5.9 percent cost of investment on all this. Yeah, so that was. That's a, that's a tough one to overcome just to start with. Yeah. But we're working operationally. We're going to have suggestions for it on the 27th that will help things better. Mm -hmm. What I'm asking of the board is to think about the position additions that have been requested from police, rescue, uh, the uh, recreation, uh, the part time position for the finance department. And just be thinking of priorities. Is it being heard from the department heads on mm -hmm. um, the, the need for these positions? If you think about the prioritization of those, and you can post, ask any question you like on any one of them. Just ask us questions when as we can. But the public comes to you folks more than they do to us yeah. to ask you about priorities and how, why you choose this. And to me, the department has came to you folks and gave you their uh, presentations. Those are the professionals in that organization. And I, I just, uh, I guess I'm looking for you folks to decide where those priorities should lie and how much could be tackled in that. Uh, and, and those, those ideas may vary. Right. Well, that's, all and, five of them, so. and that, you know, that's one reason I bring it up because I'm sort of appealing to the department heads because the department heads know far more about their budget than I do. And I, and I in no way think, Oh, you guys don't need that. You know, I, I know you're you're very responsible and look at your budgets and only ask for what you need. I, I know that's true. But is there anything that, that we could not do this year? Because um, if I thought I got a lot of contact about ATVs, my <laughs> phone's gonna ring off the hook as soon as we release what the budgets are well, this year because it's it's scary. Eric and I have met with actually with Kevin. And we've come up with a couple suggestions for his budget um, to find funds in other areas that he can use to fund a piece of equipment per se and not raise tax dollars for it. Mm -hmm. So we we're we're working on doing that because 
that's exactly what we want to do. We don't want to see a big budget either. But mm -hmm. there are certain things you have to have. We need to get through tonight's meeting, and then the next two days are all eyes on budget. So we've been working on it for over the week now, really hard, and then in the next couple of days, you're going to be significant in that mm -hmm. those areas of concern. And like I said, I, I, I have no doubt that you folks need what you need. You know, there's no doubt about it. It's just, you know, we don't know those budgets as well as, as you folks do. You, Kevin, and you, Jason, and you, Corey, you know them better than we do. And same with the general government. But because uh, we can't look through these budget books and go, oh, maybe you don't need this, you know, when you really do need that. And I'm, I'm not saying you don't need all of it. I'm sure you do. But is there something that doesn't have to happen this cycle? Anyway, that was just my concern, but I appreciate the help. Huh? Well, does anybody have anything else? No, I, su I support what you're saying. I think that's really important. Yeah. Um, also, I'm wondering in terms of um, <clears throat> having good knowledge to um, to talk to, um, you know, more some voters with. Since I'm really new at this, I had like a couple of, like. Um, I don't know, probably silly question, but what exactly does it mean for the taxpayer when we raise a half cent on the grand list? Like, what are they? 34,000? 30, yeah, uh, when the grand list is lodged, it's a certain dollar amount. Uh -huh. And one half cent on it has historically been somewhere around thirty-two to $34,000. Okay, so what does that mean for the individual? How much more are they paying in taxes? It's hard does to make it that depend, Does it depend on their, is it their property tax? It depends on their uh, their value. It depends on a lot of things. Not everybody pays the same. Yeah. The percentage okay. increase of your of the government budget uh -huh. does not translate equally to the percentage increase in your property tax. Right. Because our grand list has grown at a very, very good rate. With all the development we've had here in Morrisville, that is going to help us tremendously to offset that increase in property taxes. And so the tax rate, even though the budgets go up, the tax rate may go down. Yeah. So, but I, I'm pretty sure we're going to. So you know, that. just think of it this way: if, if one half cent is thirty-two thousand dollars, and your grand list grows, you're you're spreading that thirty-two thousand dollars over more people. Yeah. So the impact of the individual is a lot less. That's yeah. Right. Yeah. As the grand list grows, like half cent equates to a higher dollar figure. Yes. Yeah. So what is but what is that half cent on the what? Um, it's half cent on the on the tax on the grand list. How? Half cent on the dollar or half cent on the it's, it's, it's how much half cent raised in the sense is how much is one cent raised the budget based on the grand list the overall the yeah. value of all the property in Morrisville so. and it's a formula and I, I don't begin to tell you how that works so it's a Terry Savings and uh, uh, conversation she's our adjuster she but that's what we go by like the highway you gets you get your overview with your budget book you will see where it says one cent on the a grand list and it has a figure. It's an estimate, of course, because it's a budget for the highway capital equipment fund and the fire capital equipment fund and it's sixty five thousand dollars. And then the half cent is like the noise house and it's just half of that. But it's all it, it's all to be, you know, determined based on whether the grand list is lodged or not. And then and then the other part of that is that the municipal side of the your property tax bill is only 15 percent. Um, 85 percent comes from the school, from the state and federal education funding stuff, 85%. and that's what people do not understand or believe or even know. Um, so 85 percent of your property tax bill is the school, and we can't do anything about. It. We can't we can't dissect it. We can't look at it. It just it is what it is. Yeah. So when people are calling us about the budget. We're only talking about 15% of that, of that amount of taxes. That's not, you know, not to say we can't, you know, change it, but right. it's, it's still a very small percentage of the overall tax bill. Right. And people, I still talk to people every day that don't, don't know that, yeah. you know. So. I had a taxpayer come to me the other day, wanted to know what was happening last year with him. He said it was an extra $400. And I said, it's not us. I said, what do you mean? I said, go back and look here. Last year, we were very close to the level of funding. Real close. I, I, I honestly, I have had the conversation with two of the taxpayers. 
and the change had nothing to do with our budget. It was the education reimbursement. Right. They did not qualify for as much education reimbursement on the current funding formula as they had the year before. Those big increases in their tax bills, that was not our budget. I yeah. guarantee you, if they looked at right. their education funding reimbursement, they got a lot less. And it says it on the tax bill. It says right here. And I showed it to yeah. them. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I've had a couple of folks angry and came hey, my tax is one of it. And it was a roughly the same amount. Yeah. And I said, I think probably not. Uh, and when I said the education reimbursement, he went, yeah. 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 I, did. I didn't get as much as he did before. Well, that's where your increase is. Yeah. Well. Right. Sarah, do you have any comment about that? I know you you have in the past. You understand it probably better than all of us do. Yeah, I'm ha I'm having a hard time hearing all of you though. Um, okay. Jess, Absolutely. I can work on. A, I have a spreadsheet that I use for the village when I calculate the village tax rate. Yeah. Um, that I could email you if it's helpful and it says if your house is valued at 75 75,000 this is what your tax would go up um rate um that's very so helpful. that's also we're, we're, perspective i think yeah mm -hmm. and and um i working on my reports for the town report too and um i'm kind of geeking out and i've made some graphics that maybe will help Two that and one of them um, shows the difference between the town, the municipal tax rate versus the school tax rate too. Some visuals. It's it's gotten closer. It's not eighty five fifteen anymore, but it's still it's still majority school versus the town. Yeah, it'd be good to know that figure, but I know I know I'm not saying exactly eighty five and fifteen, but it's something like that as far as. The and the, the state did change the tax bills last year so that it was supposed to help people see because it has the municipal amount on one side and the town amount on the other side. Um, now it's just numbers all over the place. So I think the intention was, was good, but in reality, now people can't figure out how much to pay because there's numbers all over this piece of paper. Right, made it more confusing. That's what I heard. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Sarah. Was was there specific questions? I can hear some. Bob, I can hear you great, and um, Jess, but the rest of you, I have a harder time. No, it's just nice to have your comments about it. Yeah, Gary's mumbling. <laughs> but thank you. Yeah, I, I can't hear Eric that well either. It's all right, but not great. Okay. All right. Um, do we have any old business? Any other business? Can we adjourn? So moved. Second. Motion by Judy. Second by Gary. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? We are now adjourned.